Well, students, thanks for joining me, and I have as my very special guest um, a um, person who I've known for quite some time, Mi Lin Chen Yi Mei. Uh, we're sitting here in the Federal Court Library, a beautiful building, and Mi Lin is a judge's associate, a Federal Court judge's associate, a former law student, uh, but also a counsellor for the city of Yarra. Mi Lin, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Well, I said I've known you for quite some time because uh, as a young student, you actually wrote me a letter when I was Attorney General asking to do work experience with me. Um, can you remember that and why did that come about? Yeah, uh, I think it was in year 10. I, I was looking to do work experience and I had heard great things and I was looking at doing something that um, was interesting and always interested in government. So I yeah, wrote you a letter and I, th I think I actually asked to come back at my um, Christmas holiday, so I think I did two stints with you. So you're obviously pretty enthusiastic, um, even uh, way back then, about doing law. Why, why did you decide to do law? Uh, I think I always grew up thinking that I'd like to make a difference. Being a child of the 90s and listening to Michael Jackson, I always wanted to, um, yeah, do something that uh, had an impact and social justice was always something that was really important to me and law made sense to me. Got a lot of students uh, watching this, wondering where their careers are going to yeah. take them. Did you find studying law hard? Was it a was it a hard course? And and how did you end up uh, upon completion of your law course becoming a judge's associate? Yeah, look, law was quite difficult at the time. Um, I remember being told that we weren't going to have jobs at the end of the um, our degree, and you know, I, I think I met with you a lot during that time too. Um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do and really feeling like the law course was gearing me towards commercial law, you know, contracts, commercial law, corporations, but not really connecting with that. And I, I think graduating, not knowing what I wanted to do as well, you know, but going for it um, was a struggle. And what kind of got me through is, you know, having a great mentor to kind of get me through that hard time as well as um, finding myself and what my strengths were and being comfortable with who I am and why I, remembering why I studied law. And a judge's associate, uh, how, how did you come about get, getting that job and what does it entail? Yeah, judge's associate, well, it's a very unique role. Um, I, I just applied, it, it took a while and, and I stuck in there and I had really good advice and people encouraging me. And um, my resume was picked up and, you know, despite my name, um, yeah, it was picked up and I met the judge and it was first at the county court with Judge Anderson. And yeah, it was great. I, the, the role works closely with the judge and it's a real mentorship role as well. So it's, it's, not, um, it's not an affirm environment. You are working with, you know, someone who was at the top of their career um, and who was completely brilliant. So having that opportunity to work so closely with them and, and learning what a good advocate is and how to apply the law. You know, it's judge written law. So um, it's, it's such a unique experience. I'd recommend anyone interested to really apply for it. And you're working in an environment where uh, certainly in the past it's been dominated by usually white Anglo-Saxon males, uh, often from a private school background. You yeah. come from a pretty diverse background. Uh, you're a young female. Have you uh, come across any sort of glass ceiling as a result of your background? Um, I, I think when I was applying for jobs, definitely, especially having the name, as I said, that I do. I, I didn't change my name. Um, and being, a, you know, a piece of paper and, and a resume is really hard. But I think I kind of tried to accentuate what was unique about me rather than what I thought they were wanting to hear. And that was obviously picked up by um, a judge um, and who took interest. But I, I've been pretty lucky that I haven't experienced any real glass ceilings. I guess the way people maybe um, assume or what they assume about me might come through. But um, no, I've had, had more people encourage me um, if you're interested, I think. If you're genuinely interested, people are more likely to encourage you um, as a, a demographic that is a minority than discourage you. And so law graduate and then on to judge's associate and then you make the decision to run 
for local politics um, <laughs> in 2016 and you get elected to the city of Yarra as a councillor. Why did you make that decision and did the law help you in making that decision? Yeah, I, well, I, I think knowing what local government is um, and what, what the role of um, local councils uh, is, was a huge part of me running. Um, I had some exposure to planning law um, while I was a paralegal um, working for a government firm. And yeah, that kind of exposure made me realise there's a lot of work that you can do at a local level and a lot, lot of services that are offered. Um, and I guess that social justice aspect really encouraged me to run. And I'm kind of the person that, you know, if I have an idea, I kind of run with it. And it seemed like a great opportunity. I, 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 had, I was interested. I spoke to all my mentors, including yourself, that you know, whether it was a good decision for me and I had the support. So um, I was lucky enough to take a risk like that and see it as a challenge for me and, you know, a great thing to do. And I ran and I was elected. So. Well, uh, since being elected, you've been at the forefront of some, um, some pretty high profile decisions, including the decision uh, not to recognise uh, Australia Day mm. for uh, the Indigenous population within your electorate and also the safe injecting facility. How have you found the pressure of those decisions um, and getting the balance right between the council job and also uh, that of a judge's associate? Uh, it, it's been, it was a <laughs> baptism of fire, I'll say that. Um, you know, th those two decisions, just uh, there was no better feeling than sticking your neck out for something you believed in, yep. something that you know that um, is controversial, but, you know, speaks solely to my values and you know why I you know was felt like I could run for council um, and then the pressure of it was quite a bit I, I've got to say but I to have people that support me around me I can't emphasize having good mentors and people that you can rely on good family um, to get you out of the throes of the pressure and the, the politics and the media which was you know the first time for me as well I'm, I'm not trained in, in handling that kind of criticism. But um, following who you are and your own values is so important and, and having a supportive judge, I'm lucky. I have a judge that is very um, pro um, indigenous rights. You know, he works a lot in native title, Justice North at the moment, and he, he understands the cause and, and our values aligned. So he was very supportive. Um, in all, all those events last year, so. And uh, where to from here for Me Lin? Uh, where do you reckon you might <laughs> be in 10 years time? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm a five year plan kind of person. Um, I think I'm happy to follow my nose and I, I really do think it's about recognising opportunities when they arise. And I think I've been really lucky to do that, you know, with the running for council with the judge's associate positions and it's led me um, into some great positions and opportunities. So, uh, you know, having mentors that can guide me and help me recognise those opportunities has been a big part of it. But I, I think the long game maybe is to work in industrial relations, um, workers' rights and, and, you know, continue that social justice fight. So. And uh, finally, uh, if you had one or two bits of advice for our students who are watching this, a bit concerned about where their career might mm -hmm. go, um, probably the same feelings as you when you started out, am I going to get a job? Mm. Um, what, what bits of advice would you give them? I would say two things. Um, find a good mentor who can encourage you and, and who can lead the way. Someone that you respect and admire and, and that you think, I want to be there, that's, that's someone I want to be and just build a relationship and they will guide you, you know, help you make right choices when it comes to it and, and recognise opportunities. Second of all, I think really knowing yourself and why you studied law and what connects with you um, is so much stronger than, you know, trying to succeed in what you're told to succeed, being clerkships or, you know, a top tier firm. Um, I think if you, you really know who you are and you have good people guiding you, it'll all work out. Well, there you go, students. Great p bits of advice from uh, Mi Lin Chen Yi Mei. Um, just 
find yourself a mentor, somebody who you can look up to, who can guide you, and also um, make sure you've got plenty of passion, understand yourself, understand why you're doing law. You will be able to make a difference just like me, Lynn.